In this video, I am going to explain how we can create a Kubernetes cluster on Amazon EKS. To create a cluster, we have to follow three steps. So first we have to create a cluster. Uh, then uh, we will create a managed node group as a worker nodes. Then we will uh, deploy a small kind of application for testing purpose. Okay, as of now you can see that I don't have any cluster over here. So uh, let me quickly create this. Uh, click on add a cluster, uh, create. Uh, we can provide a name. So I'll call this as the project. Okay, you can provide any name, no restriction. So Kubernetes version. So as per the latest version, it's 1.29. If you want to uh, create 1.29, you can do that. So this is the most recommended one. So I will create a cluster in 1.28. Then I'll show you how I can upgrade my cluster from 1.28 to 29. Okay, so uh, now click on cluster role. So I can provide the cluster role. So unfortunately, I don't have any role right now. So first go to IAM. Now what is the purpose of this role? So uh, whenever you're creating a cluster, the cluster has to manage a lot of AWS resources. Uh, it should manage a node group. It should manage EC2 instance, uh, ECR, right? So behalf of us, this cluster will manage all the stuff. So uh, click on this role. Uh, you can click on create a role. Uh, click on AWS service. You can search the service name as EKS. Uh, select EKS cluster. You no need to add any extra policy. This is itself enough. Uh, click on next. You can provide a role name. I'll create a role called uh, Dev Project Role. Okay. Uh, now click on create a role. Now we successfully created a role. Uh, if I go to Dev Project Role, you can see that Dev Project Role over here. Okay. Now let me click on uh, create EKS cluster again. So here uh, we haven't added a role. Let's click on refresh. So now you can see that Dev Project Role. We added one role, right? So now come down, now cluster access. So in two way we can access to cluster. One is EKS API, another one is through config map. I'm not sure whether you're aware about this EKS API and config map. Anyway, we will have a separate discussion for that. At that time we can discuss this. Okay, so second thing, bootstrap cluster administrator access. So here you can see that allow cluster administrator access, allow cluster administrator access for IAM principle. Uh, this allow cluster administrator access uh, for IAM principle. So uh, when you create a Kubernetes cluster, like by using which user, so that user will have by default admin privilege. So if you want to allow that, you can allow. If you want to deny that, you can de deny that. Okay. Then afterwards, you can go to EKS uh, config map or AP, then you can provide the permission customly. Okay. So, uh, so that is a default behavior of Kubernetes cluster. If you want, you can do that. As of now, I'll go with the allow cluster administrator access. So who creating this cluster, that user will have all the permission to manage Kubernetes. Okay, by default. Uh, same as I can manage my authentication using EKS AP as well as config map. Uh, rest everything, you can keep it as default. Click on next. Now VPC, virtual private cloud we have to create. So if you already have a virtual private cloud, you can use that. Okay, I already have a default one. So let me use this, okay. Next security group. Uh, if you have a security group, you can select the security group. If you don't have, you can skip this. Uh, cluster IP address family, IPv4. If you want to create IPv6, you can do that. Uh, cluster access, okay, public and private endpoint. This is fine, uh, click on next. Mm, these all are default one, uh, we can leave this. So Amazon EKS add-on. So this is important. So when you create a cluster, you have to allocate core DNS, queue proxy, Amazon VPC CNA. So this is very, very important. So if you are not adding these add-on, then your Kubernetes cluster will not work. Okay. So this is just optional one. We can skip this, uh, but DNS, queue proxy, Amazon VPC CNA is important. So this is for the DNS activity inside the cluster. So this is for the load balancing and this is for IP address allocation and deallocation. Uh, that's what, for networking. Uh, click on next. So this is the version of the uh, add-ons. Click on next. Uh, create a cluster. Okay. Now this has started creating our cluster. And this process will take minimum 15 minutes. So uh, let's wait for 15 minutes. Then let's create our node group. As you can see over here, now our cluster is active and running. So now we don't have any nodes. Okay. So now we have to create the worker nodes for the slaves. So to do that, uh, let's go to compute. Uh, here you can see that add a node group. Uh, click on add a node group. Uh, we can provide a name, uh, dev project. Uh, this is for the node group, right? Punchy. 
uh, not IAM role, you can create a IAM role or you can use the default one. So what I'm going to do now, I will create a new IAM role. Okay, let's go to IAM again. Uh, click on create a role. Uh, let's click on AWS services. Uh, you can select the role for EC2. Okay, so the trusted relationship entity is EC2 now. Uh, click on next. So here we have to select EC2 container read only access. Uh, let's contain registry power user. Yeah, this is the one. Next, we have to search for CNA, Amazon EKS CNA policy, uh, then EKS worker node policy. Okay, so these three policy we need. Uh, so I can pass the project node group role. Uh, click on create a role. Now this is created the role. Let's go to our node group and refresh this. So now you can see that we have a two role. So uh, I'll select the hyphen project in zero. This is the role I created some time back. Uh, then click on next. If you want any labels, if you want any taint and toleration, everything you can add. Uh, as of now, I'll go with the default uh, you know, configuration. Click on next. So uh, this is the AMA type, Amazon Linux. Uh, this is x86 architecture, on-demand one. Uh, T2 dot medium, uh, disk size is 20. Uh, desired node is two, uh, minimum size is two and maximum two. Uh, click on next. Uh, we can select the subnets. So I selected 1C, 1A, 1B. So this is enough. Mm, click on next. Create. Okay. Now this is scaling and it's creating. So let's wait for 5 to 10 minutes. Within 5 to 10 minutes, this will create a node group with the two nodes. Then afterwards, we can get the credential, Amazon Cube config file. Then we can access your Kubernetes. Later, we will deploy a small application over there. Now we successfully created the node group as well. You can see two nodes is running, t3.media, uh, four minutes back it's created. Okay, so this is the node group. Uh, under this node group, we have a two nodes. Okay, all are managed one. To create a kubeconfig file, so first we have to execute AWS EKS update kubeconfig, minus minus name, dev project, minus minus region, UAC is one. Now you can see my kubeconfig file is created successfully. And this is under slash users Muhammad Ashik dot cube config. So now let's execute kubectl get ports. So here you can see that we don't have any port is running in my Kubernetes cluster. So let's go with the minus m uh, cube system namespace. So you can see that uh, we have close to six six port is running. And uh, the pod is created seven minutes back, 15 minutes back, nine minutes back, right? So anyway, now cluster is successfully running. Now let's go ahead and create a small application in a different namespace. Uh, to do that, first we can create a namespace, kubectl, uh, create a namespace, uh, test app. We created a namespace. Uh, let's create the Nginx application now. To create a sample application, uh, we can create a Nginx, kubectl, run. Uh, we can pass nginx minus minus image we can specify the image name nginx latest version minus n then test app so this is the namespace so this command will create a nginx pod on namespace test hyphen app so let's go ahead and test that kubectl get pods then minus n test hyphen app you can see that pod is running successfully now let's do a pod forwarding okay kubectl pod hyphen forward you can pass your pod name, pod name is Nginx and the pod number you can specify 3400 and the container pod number is 80 and minus n test hyphen app enter. So this will forward uh, from 3480 to this particular pod Nginx. Uh, let's go to my browser and try to hit on this pod number 3400. You can see that welcome to Nginx. Okay, I'm able to access my application now. So further, if you want to create ingress or any other advanced networking level, you can do that. So uh, I just want to do a small test whether I'm able to access my application or not. So that's what we created this port forward. Cool. I hope you understood how we can create a Kubernetes cluster on EKS. So this is the basic step. On top of that, we can build a lot of other blocks as well. Um, thank you for watching my video. Bye.